There are some pretty horrendous pet parrot products on the market, so today we are talking about some of them. And make sure you stick around for the last one because it's one of the worst products I think I've ever seen for pet parrots. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. We are talking about these terrible pet parrot products in this video. Now if you've ever bought any of these products, this is not me kind of saying you're a bad bird owner. We've all made uh, different choices, but I want to give you as much information as possible about how some of these products just aren't suitable for parrots and of course I'm only talking about five today so this video is not an exhaustive list of all the terrible things out there for pet parrots so if you'd like me to make a part two then let me know down in the comments but I think we'll get straight into things now the first one I wanted to talk about might, well I suppose some of these might be controversial because some people might be using them but you may not be aware that they're not good for your birds and that is jelly cups Jelly cups are not appropriate for parrots in any way. They are full of sugars and E numbers. This is not something you want to put into your bird's body. It's not going to be good for them. Now, I know why people do it. They say, well, it's just a treat. It's okay. But there are lots of other healthier treats that you can give your bird that are parrot appropriate. Things like a little bit of extra nuts or some actual fruit instead of some of these weird jelly cups. And I think these jelly cups are just rebranded from people who use them for like invertebrates or feeder food for reptiles and things like that. Personally, I wouldn't even use it for bugs or reptiles or anything. I don't think they're appropriate for any species. Just have a look at the ingredients list of anything you want to feed your parrot and see, is this something I really want to put into my bird's body? Is this actually gonna keep them healthy? The answer for these jelly cups is probably not. There are lots of other things that you can offer your birds as a treat, as a yummy, as a special thing. Um, but jelly cups probably shouldn't be one of those, should they, Pickles? You can say, hi, everyone. Good girl. The next one is Happy Hearts, Cozy Hearts, Tents, whatever you want to call them. I do talk about them an awful lot because they're just so inappropriate for parrots. Not only do they promote hormonal behaviour because your bird goes into this nest-like area, but also there is a risk of crop impaction if your bird starts chewing on these materials. They're not made of material that your bird can digest. And even those ones that are made out of seagrass and things like that, they're still not appropriate because they could encourage hormonal behaviour. And nobody wants that from their parrot. It's not a pleasant experience. So we need to stop using these in our bird's cages. Now we often anthropomorphize our birds and we uh, put our own emotions onto them thinking they need to be nice and cozy and toasty and warm at night but they don't need it, they are birds uh, and in the wild parrots would be just sleeping on a branch. There aren't enough tree cavities and all that kind of stuff for hundreds of thousands of individual parrots to sleep in. Now I have actually been to the wild, I've seen parrots sleeping on branches. Here's an example of a photo I took of an Amazon. I know that doesn't apply to all parrots, but it's an example of how parrots do sleep in the wild, just on a branch. So that's what you need to provide for your bird, a nice simple branch with some bark on, nice and high up in their cage, and that will keep them nice and um, relaxed and ready for bed. The next product that I don't recommend are millet holders, also sometimes used as vegetable holders as well. You can get them plastic, you can get them metal, but they are exceptionally dangerous for birds. If you look on the first page of Google Images, you are going to see some really horrible pictures of birds being stuck in these. I'm obviously not gonna put them in this video because they are quite upsetting. The really important thing to remember is with things like metal and plastic, if your bird does crawl in because they're trying to get these treats, they're not gonna be able to get back out again because they can't chew through these materials. Uh, it does happen a lot with budgies because they are so small and curious, uh, but it could happen with any kind of bird getting stuck on these products. Uh, it's just no good for them. The other thing that's important to remember is your bird doesn't need a whole sprig of millet in their cage as well. More often than not, if your bird likes millet, you should be using it for training treats or sprouting it or soaking it or having it in their diet in another way. You don't wanna be just giving them a huge big sprig of millet in their cage, because then they're probably not gonna eat the healthier things you're offering them, which is a, a mistake that a lot of people make when doing diet conversion, or just trying to get their bird to eat something nice and tasty, isn't it, Pickles? So please don't use these millet holders. Your bird doesn't need a whole sprig of millet in their cage to be happy. Use that millet to your advantage, get them working for it, get them training for it, and use it for bonding work as well. Number four is bird shampoos. I don't know why these companies think that these are appropriate for parrots. They are not appropriate in any way. I've shown an example on the screen. I'm not calling out this company specific because there are lots of companies who make bird shampoos. Your bird can naturally clean themselves. You know, they have all these oils that they use to condition their feathers. They should not be um, needing to use shampoos or anything like that to stay clean. Obviously we want to offer bathing opportunities for our birds and I do have a video about how to bathe your bird in lots of different ways, how to train your bird to enjoy bathing too. So make sure you uh, check that out. But 
it's very rare that your bird would need to soothe their skin with any of these shampoos. The only reason they would need their skin soothed is they, if they have a skin infection or sometimes during molting. But there are other ways that you can do this. You can spray different avian teas diluted in water on them or just offer regular baths or take them into a steamy bathroom where it's nice and humid which will really uh, moisturise their skin. They do not need any of these really strange uh, perfumed um, shampoos, even if they say they're natural and things like that. It's not a, pro a product that's appropriate, especially for feathers. You know, for dogs and cats, sometimes they may need a wash and a bath and things like that. You can't scrub feathers like that and expect them to come out nice and fresh and new. It's not gonna happen. And if your bird is stinky as well and you don't know why, I actually have a video with five reasons why your bird might smell. So I recommend checking that out too because it might not be the reason that you think as well. But please stay away from these sprays, shampoos, anything spraying onto your bird's feathers. It's unnecessary, they just need water. They can look after their feathers just fine without these shampoos. You know, they are still wild animals, they're not domesticated um, and they don't need all of these marketed products that are kind of more marketed towards humans than they are to the birds and their needs. Now, before I mention the last product, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss any of my videos coming up. But Pickles, should we tell them what the worst product is that I found for this video specifically? It is this monstrosity. This is called the Quiet Me and it's by Preview Pet Products and I actually quite like a lot of the things that Preview produces but I don't know who in their team thought this was a good idea. It's probably one of the worst training devices I've ever seen for a parrot. This Quiet Me emits a bright light, flashes it at your parrot if they start uh, screaming or vocalising to try and interrupt them. This is so inappropriate, I don't even know where to start. Firstly, interruption is quite an advanced training technique. Deja and I have a video on that on our Patreon. But if your bird is vocalizing and then you start shining a bright light at them, that's not very ethical. It's not a good way to um, help your bird through it. It's more of a punishment. It's gonna be stressful for them. It's gonna be disruptive. And this is not going to solve your behavior problems. I will give them a bit of credit that they say that you have to use other training methods with this device in order to correct behaviour issues, but this is so unnecessary, it's going to be used in completely the wrong way by people who don't understand training theory, and there's no need for it. I honestly don't know why this is created. It really, really annoyed me when I first saw it because it's so wholly inappropriate, does not promote positive reinforcement training, it's just a way of stressing your bird out to try and interrupt the um, undesirable behaviour and it's not going to work. If you have um, problem behaviours or undesirable behaviours with your bird and you want something that will work, then book a consultation with David and I at Best Behaved Birds uh, because we have evidence-based, science-based, positive reinforcement training that actually works with your bird. We have them as the forefront of the training. We want them to succeed. We want them to live in their best lives. And we have got the skills and techniques that we can share with you to work through all different kinds of things like screaming, biting, or any kind of undesirable behaviours that you may see. This device is not going to help with that and it probably will be used in the wrong way by people who may be completely innocent to all of this and not know how to use it properly. Just don't do it. I've seen other websites of people trying to show you how to make your own strobe lights to flash at your birds. It's, it's wrong, I'm sorry. I, I've, I've, you can see I've got a bee in my bonnet about this. It's not appropriate for birds. So please don't buy this. If you want help with your birds and working through any kind of behaviour problems, or you just want help with your training as well, or whatever it may be, do contact us at Best Way Birds. Link's gonna be down in the description. Um, but yeah, we would love to hear from you and actually help you solve some of these problems to make living with your um, bird much easier and more enjoyable. So this does bring me to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of these terrible pet parrot products. If there's any I've missed, then drop them down because there are plenty of them. And if you'd like me to make a part two or just make more of this into a series, then do let me know as well as I would love to speak to you. But from me and baby Biggles, thanks for watching. Take care and see you later. Can you say bye? Good girl. <laughs>